In today's video, I'm going to be revisiting this deck that I constructed over four years ago. I'm going to be peeling back some of the planks to have a look at that substructure to see how well it's lasted. And it does get quite a lot of weather in spite of that reef I put on a couple of years ago. Whether in hindsight my substructure could have been improved upon. I'm going to be looking at the various oils I've used to tell you whether I think there's any difference in terms of how well they preserve the deck. And finally, I'm going to be looking at the different alternatives you've got, hardwood, softwood or composite, and drawing some conclusions over this four year period to tell you which one I think is best to use for your deck. Okay, just a quick bit of background. I built this deck back in August 2020 using tantalized but non-structural timber from my local farm DIY supply store. For the deck substructure, I set bricks in concrete, four per joist to sit on with weed matting below. And I really recommend you use weed matting because it's proved to be really effective in suppressing weeds from growing up through the decking planks. And I made a few mistakes. Thinking I'd be putting the roof on pretty soon, I was more concerned about damp coming up from below than rain coming from above. And so stupid as this sounds, I stapled DPC to the bottom of each joist. I also screwed the planks tight without any gaps. Realising the error of my ways a few weeks later, I removed all the planks to find the deck was sodden without any ventilation. And of course, the DPC had pools of water in it. So I stripped away all of that DPC, and when the sun had dried out the joists, I coated the entire structure in Bostic bituminous paint. I also slipped glazing packers under each joist to stop any damp passing up through the bricks below. Was all of this effective? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute, but I think it's really important that you see what I went through because there are lots of elements that go into a successful, long-lasting decking system. Not just the decking planks themselves, but also vitally important is that substructure. I had a lot of people then saying I'd put my decking planks the wrong way up, so I had to do another video pointing out why that wasn't the case. My deck planks have got grooves on both sides, and in fact, the underside has a manufacturer's stamp all over it. So these have clearly been designed to have that sort of castle structure on the top. But I'll be explaining what planks I think you should buy and my views on grooves later on in the video. And that brings us neatly on to oiling. At this point, there was no roof on the deck, and so I did another video a year later explaining what a mess the hot tub mat I made had left on the deck. And so it was out with Ron Seal's deck cleaner and reviver, a good scrub of the deck which came up extremely well. I'm a big fan of the deck cleaner and reviver, it seems really effective at removing any ingrained dirt. Followed by a light pressure wash and then I could start thinking about what oil to use. I did a pretty exhaustive trial to see what oil would work best on this deck. and ended up treating it with man's UV decking oil on the recommendation of Wood Finishers Direct who I bought the oil and cleaning kit from. That was July 2021. Six months later and in January 2022, the roof went on although with no overhang. The deck still got pretty soaked around the edges, including the area I'm revealing today. In July that year, we gave it another clean and oil and then you've guessed it, another 12 months after that in June 2023, I cleaned and reoiled it again. And now a year later, August 2024, I've oiled it yet again, which is what triggered me to do this update video today. Okay, so that's a lot of maintenance, a minimum of every 12 months. Why so? Well, number one, I bought softwood decking. If you forget about the grooves being on both sides for a minute, this is actually pretty decent stuff. It's chunky at 32 millimeters thick, but being softwood is porous like a sponge. The tantalization these days isn't a patch on what it used to be when they used arsenic as part of the process. And you can see it doesn't sink in very far. So you'll find it's porous both to water and to the oil that you're trying to treat it with. Now, a lot of the decking oil companies advise that you wait for the tantalization to fade away a bit. I wouldn't do that. I'd crack on and oil it as soon as possible. That way you're oiling a nice clean deck before any dirt has got into the surface. Because trust me, as time goes by, you get less diligent at cleaning it or perhaps it becomes harder to get the dirt out and you end up oiling a slightly dirty deck as I've done this time round. But you do need to re-oil, particularly softwoods, because as I said, the oil sinks in and becomes less effective with time. Look at this section I just re-oiled and compare it with this decking that's now on the curved hot tub seating I made. It was oiled over a year ago and you can see in some areas how water sinks in whilst it's still beading in others. But at risk of stating the obvious, you also need to re-oil your deck because it will get dirty. It gets covered in algae, it loses its luster and it ends up crying out for a bit of TLC. 
Now I've always used the Ron Seal Deck Cleaner and Viva, which is I think is brilliant. Although this time around, even though I ordered this, they sent me this more generic product, just something to be aware of, or maybe it's now one and the same. And whilst it's pretty good at removing the dirt, I suspect it also removes some of the oil that's sitting near the surface. And also the pressure washing will add to this. So bottom line, the deck will look dirty before you've cleaned it. It'll look thirsty after you've cleaned it. Either way, it needs oiling. So what oil should you use? Well, to be honest, I wouldn't get too hung up about this. I started, as you know, on this Man's Premier UV decking oil. And when that ran out, I went on to this no nonsense from Screwfix. Uh, people used to be pretty evangelical about this. It's, they no longer stock it. And to be honest with you, I found it a bit thin and a lot of reviews have more recently been a bit mixed. And when this sort of ran out, which it more or less has now, I went on to this also highly regarded decking oil from Baratine. Now I had a chat with Andy off of Gosford Handyman recently about decking oils when he was planning his excellent decking video which I'll link in the description below this vid and he was going to use Owatrol's D1 which is good for hard and soft woods. In the end he ended up going with the Baratine like me so I would say the point here is you're going to be doing this regularly so it doesn't really matter which brand you use. Don't trust what the manufacturers say about the UV elements to these decking oils because also I have it on good authority that any oil that is pretty much transparent it doesn't promise to change the colour of the wood and of course which is going to sink into this soft wood isn't going to give your wood much UV protection. The only thing I would say is if you're planning a hardwood deck, do choose your oil a bit more carefully because some oils, particularly some of the Overtrol oils, are designed specifically for hardwoods, whereas softwood just ain't so choosy. And the last bit of advice I'm going to give you on this is please, 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 whatever you do, don't be tempted to stain your deck with one of these because stains sit on the surface, they don't sink into the wood not to be confused with a tinted oil which will sink into the wood whilst changing the colour of the wood. If you treat your wood with a stain like this and in six months to a year the stain will start peeling off giving you the mother of all problems trying to sort it out. This stuff did this damage to our porch. So what are the other options? Well hard wood decking is undeniably going to be a far superior solution to that softwood I've got. You've only got to look at this bit of hardwood that I fished out of a skip on a building site that I was working on I actually use this for decking to see the point. Firstly, it's incredibly heavy. Secondly, it's very dense. And if you look at this doorbell surround that I made out of it, I'm going to say five or six years ago now, which by the way, I never treated with anything. You'll see there's absolutely no sign of deterioration at all. The outside has gone slightly silvered with the wood just a couple of millimeters in looks as good as the day it was cut. So hardwood would definitely be my preference, but there is unfortunately an obvious catch. That softwood I bought would be today £11.98 per 3.6 metre length. So that's £3.33 a metre. And I put these prices together a couple of days ago from a bit quick bit of googling on the internet. And you're looking at £29.65 for an equivalent length, that's £8.24 per metre of yellow balao, which is only 21 millimetres thick. £52 for Iroko, £14.46 per metre and £66 for a length of the Rolls-Royce IPE hardwood, which comes in at over £18 per metre. And what about composite? Well, it was hailed as a big breakthrough a few years back, but again, it's expensive at over £10 a metre. Ah, oh, but it's maintenance free, I hear you say. Well, not entirely. I canvassed you all on my community tab the other day, and interestingly, whilst opinions are mixed amongst us DIYers, installers have had enough of all the warping and fading they get with most composites. 99% of the time they're installed on timber subframes that are not rot before the composite or otherwise contribute to the warping itself. And even at design Rob Pierce, who had a really nice wood grain composite installed six years ago, said it needs regular cleaning, has expanded and contracted and faded. And you can get UV recoats apparently. Thanks for that, Rob. I didn't know you could do this and I looked into it and Rust-Oleum produced this. And when you have to repaint your composite, you start thinking, hang on a minute, you know what I'm saying. It was £60 a plank, he went to the effort of installing on a composite frame, but even with all that, he's not convinced it beats a well-maintained wooden deck. And I think it's interesting that a lot of marinas are still sticking to hardwood pontoons. These pictures from a recent trip down to Cornwall. 
So getting the substructure right is critically important. Composite substructures like Rob used exist and there's this utterly brilliant aluminium system that Grad used for their screwless hardwood decks. Interesting they've gone with an aluminium plastic substructure but still sticking to natural wood for the main deck. But wooden substructures are still very much the norm. And whilst I use bricks for the foundations of my deck, it's worth remembering pedestals exist also that can actually extend a pretty long way if you're planning a raised deck. So anyway, how did I get on with mine? I thought I'd take up a decking board for you so we could have a look at the subframe and my first issue was how well those screws had survived. Now, if I'm honest, I used some pretty average decking screws for this job. In actual fact, they didn't come out too badly, but to give you an example, four years um, over the four year period, that is the sort of degradation you've got uh, on the screw. And to give you an example of the ratio of good screws to bad, that is the screw that snapped in all the screws that I removed. That wasn't too bad, was it? If I had my time again, I'd probably go for some stainless steel spack stacking screws like this. That big reveal moment, moment of truth. And actually, looking in here, it looks in really good nick. Let's get rid of some of that cobwebs. Some of that cobwebs? Let's get rid of some of those cobwebs. Let's see what's I actually thought there'd be a lot more activity than this because I have had some rodents burying underneath, which I'm afraid to say I deal with by putting poison down, watching the hole they went in and then filling it in. And when the hole no longer gets excavated, you know you've dealt with a problem. You've got the bricks here for the uh, sub base and you can see there where I've slightly crudely slipped a glazing packer underneath to uh, raise the joist off the brick to prevent any damp getting up. But this is what we're focusing on, the joists themselves. Obviously after the event I coated them in bitumastic paint. Andy Macker sensibly made the point, which a lot of people have said to me in my videos actually, that by putting, casing the entire joist in bitumastic it can't breathe. Um, don't forget I did this after the event, so actually the underside of the joist hasn't been coated in the um, uh, bit bituminous paint. But the point to make here is the joists look in really good nick. No sign of any um, rotting of the joist because there's any moisture inside that can't get out. The top of that joist looks in superb condition. I suppose you'd say this one looks a little bit more um, pitted. Um, although there's no real sign of the wood sort of softening up here. You can see this joist. Uh, the bit bituminous paint has slightly um, sort of come off with the decking plank. But again, if you're worried about the top of the joist, a lot of people recommend this joist tape. And again, check out Andy's brilliant video where you can see him using it. And this is the other point I want to show you. I painted the underside of my decking boards with the uh, Bostic paint as well. And as you can see again, they're in really good nick. There's no sign of any rotting at all and don't forget these front decking planks get a lot of weather even with the roof we've got there so forget about the roof these have been completely exposed to the elements and even in the corners where i had these fascia planks which i was a bit worried would stop any um, water getting out i did actually drill a series of bleed holes you can see here there's one there um, again no sign of any rotting on that joist. Now I also did a whole video on this but should you go grooved or smooth for your decking planks that is the question. If I had my time again I would 100% go for a castle profile like this for the underside of the deck and then a smooth profile for the top. I don't know who designed this system but it's absolutely ridiculous having those two tiny grooves underneath that's not going to provide any ventilation at all. Uh, that castle profile would give maximum opportunity for air to circulate to keep that crucial joist top rot free. Also by having the smooth profile on the top you're making your life so much easier in terms of cleaning the deck before oiling it. But groove decks are less slippy I hear some of you say. Well there's an argument for that but I don't really uh, subscribe to that because if you pull your finger out and clean your deck often like I've explained that you need to do in this video you won't have any problem with a slippy deck. So where does that leave us and what are my conclusions at the end of this video? 
Well, to my mind, softwood is king. Sure, if I got the cash, I'd probably go with the hardwood just because it makes maintenance just that little bit easier. It probably looks a little bit nicer as well. But I've completely run out of money after a year's building works. And to be honest with you, I was in a similar situation during lockdown when I put this deck down. As you'll see from Andy's video, he wasn't at all impressed with the quality of his deck given the amount of wastage he had. Um, I didn't have such an issue with this, but it does make the point that you should shop around because there are lots of companies selling softwood decking and some are better than others and if you can go with a 32 mil like i've done here because again it makes for a product that has got to last longer perfect scenario castle profile on the bottom smooth on the top and there are a lot of suppliers out there doing it and the reason softwood triumphs over hardwood apart from the uh, budget re budgetary issues are if as i've shown you in this video you clean and re-oil regularly every six to twelve months you will end up with a deck like this, which is as good as the day I laid it. Oh, and buy a few decent bits of kit because it will make the job of cleaning and oiling your deck so much easier. What am I talking about here? I'm talking about this Osmo scrubbing brush and oiling brush. I also bought the Osmo paint tray. You don't really need that. A standard paint tray would do the job. And buy yourself some of this or similar because this brush has been used multiple times now and it's still going strong. Well, the temptation would have been just to bin it. So that's it for today. I hope you found this useful. Uh, details of everything that I've talked about will be in the description below the video, which of course you can access by clicking on the more button in the usual way. If you've liked today's video, please tell your friends, make a big song and dance about it. It's hard work doing this. That's all I'm saying. And uh, if you're new to my channel, it would mean so much to me to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here and don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.